Okay guys, so what we're going to do here is take everything out of this PC case and move it into this Johnsbow Mod 4 PC case. In order to make this build easier, what I'm going to do is firstly just work on my old PC case and I'm going to pull everything out. It's almost as if I'm building another PC. That way I'm not messing around and pulling things back and forth, working with two cases at once. And then we will get building the new case. First thing we're going to do is undo all the screws that hold the side panels in place and then we will start to remove everything. There's four thumb screws that hold the side panels so we'll just remove them and we'll slide off the side panels. We'll set that aside. Same for the one on this side as well, you just slide it back and the side case comes off. I think the best thing to do here would just be to unplug everything and start to remove the simpler things first that are easy to get to. We're going to start by unplugging the hard drives, the solid state drive, and then um, we'll start to remove everything. I'm just gonna flip this around real quick and I'm going to unplug the SSD and the hard drive. Not all hard drives unplug this way. Sometimes your SATA cable will have a pin on it. So make sure you press on that pin first and then you remove it. And as you can see here, there are a whole lot of bunch of zip ties that tidy up this whole setup. We're going to need a pair of scissors or some sort of knife so we can cut them all off and remove all the cables. With the hard drive disconnected, we're going to remove that first because it's our tallest hard drive where you can just simply pull it out. It simply just clips in. I'm just showing you how this one removes, but Remember, every PC case isn't exactly the same. You just have to see how yours removes and then remove it. Now we're going to remove the solid state drive, SSD. There's four screws that hold it in place here. Solid state drive removed. Everything that basically connects to the motherboard, we're going to unplug now. First, we'll unplug the SATA cables and we can remove them because they're not zip tied in. Okay. So that's one SATA cable there, another SATA cable there. We'll unplug the graphics card. We can remove the Wi-Fi. This has also a Bluetooth. There's a USB that plugs into the motherboard. So we need to unplug that as well. We'll just pull that out. And then we're just going to unplug all the power for our front panel. That's all just down at the bottom here. So we'll just unplug all that, pull them all out. And then we also have our HD audio plug at the bottom here. So we'll just pull that straight out. There are no clips for these, they just simply come out. Next we have our uh, Wi-Fi, so we're going to unpull that out and then take it straight out. I already undid the screw here, but usually you have a screw that locks this in here, so you just undo that screw from the side here and then you can take it out. And this is what I mean. For this PC case, there is a screw that holds in an extra door and then behind this door, you get access to all the screws for your PCI slots. Now we can remove all our PCI slots so that we can remove the graphics card. I've got all these aftermarket mesh slots which I used to cover the slots that I wasn't using. All I was using was the two for the graphics card and then one for the Wi-Fi card. So now that we have the graphics card unplugged, I'm going to remove the two screws that hold in the graphics card. That's one there. And that's the second one. We can now remove the graphics card, but you do not just yank it straight out. You need to press down on the clip that holds in the graphics card. We just push down on that right here and then we can pull out our graphics card now. All right, with the graphics card removed, we can see that all we have left is our CPU power and also our motherboard power. We will unplug that by pressing on a clip on the side here and then we'll pull that out. There we go. And this was our USB 3.0 front plug that just plugged into the USB 3.0 header. You just unplug that and then we have our CPU power cable right there. Unplug that too. With everything unplugged, we can basically remove the motherboard now by just undoing all the screws that hold the motherboard in place. We don't even have to remove the CPU fan cooler because we're just going to keep that the same. All we're trying to do is swap over the PC case so you don't have to remove your RAM nor your CPU cooler as well. That's all going to stay the same. To make things easy, we are going to remove one of the fans here. We'll undo these four screws that hold in the fan. We are going to put these fans over to our newer PC case as well. Once I remove this one, this fan should come out. That's four. This fan is running through a Molex, so 
We need to unplug the Molex connection here. That's our fan unplugged. What we can do now is remove the motherboard by unscrewing all the screws that hold the motherboard in place. In this particular case, this is not an ATX board. I believe it's an MATX board, so it's a much smaller board. It only has one, two, three, four, five, six screws that hold the entire board in place. We'll undo all these six screws and this motherboard should just come straight out. With all the six screws removed, this motherboard is going to come straight out. Bang, just like that. Look how easily that came out. We'll set this aside. Try to make sure you have a very clean surface as well. It's very important. Now it's just a matter of removing the power and cutting off all the zip ties that hold all the power cords in place so that we can slowly route all the cables out and then take the power supply out. Now zip ties are a must when you build PCs because they help to tidy up all the cables so that your cables don't look whacked and you know it's a very clean setup. If you do not want to cut the cables by accident, get all the cables that are connected to the PC case, put them aside. Everything that is wrapped in this braided sleeve, that's what's connected to the power source. All these other cables, these are connected to the PC case for the front panel, for your power supply, your LED light, and also whether or not you have a USB 3.0 connection. None of these will be removed from the case. Just need to route all these cables out and then we can remove the power supply. I've changed my power supply screws to these thumb screws. Usually, they would be kind of the same screws as the ones that hold in your PCI slots, which is this screw right here. But I've changed it to these thumb screws to make my power supply easier to take in and out. And I'll undo this last one so that the power supply doesn't fall down. I can pull out my power supply and guide all the cables out. Our power supply is out. And all that's left are the fans that are left in the PC case. In order to get to the fans at the top, what you need to do is pull off the top case. Now, it is a lot harder when you have these plugged in because they kind of restrict you from lifting up the top case. But because I've already unplugged everything, I can just pry it up and it will come straight up and I'm able to take out the fans easier. It just clips in. Most PC cases will work like this where they just clip in. The front panel of your PC case is always run by the cables here. And you need to be careful how you pull it out because the last thing you wanna do is rip any of these cables and have to fix that. That's just gonna be a pain. Here we have eight screws that hold in these two fans. So we'll just remove eight of these screws. And I always like to use a magnetic piece when I'm dealing with PCs. You just have to be careful when you're using a magnetic piece when you're next to your circuit board because sometimes magnets can screw up certain things on a PC board. There we go, and that's our fan removed. That's our other fan removed. That is our whole PC case disassembled. We can now install everything into our newer PC case. So what we're going to do is take apart the PC case. We'll start to build it slowly because what I've noticed with this PC case is it's not like other PC cases where you can get to everything without removing everything. For example, when you lift up the top panel here of the John's bow, you can see where you add three fans, one, two, and three. This is also designed for water cooling as well, and it can take from 240 to 360. It just means the size of the radiator. It's either a 240, which is two 120 fans, or 360, which is three 120 fans. I wanted a different type of PC case rather than just the standard box looking one, and something I can also display at the same time. It's cool how everything is just like a thumb screw. Take off this side panel, and then we'll pull off this panel. Next, we're going to see how many risers we need for our MATX motherboard. In this case, it only needs six. Let's just see if we have that in place. So what I've done here, it started off with nine risers, but you only need six. With that in place, we will install our motherboard. Okay, all the holes line up. They give you all the screws that you need. So they've given you a couple of zip ties, They've given you some fan screws as well, an extra motherboard riser, a spare pole for your case. And then here you have your 
hard drive screws. Here you've got your motherboard screws and then you've also got your SSD screws. They're all labeled, as you can see there. They all use different size screws. So you need to make sure you use the right screws for that purpose. We can now install the screws that hold in the motherboard. They come with these little washers, so we're going to use them. We'll just screw that in just tight enough so that it's snug. That's our motherboard securely in. What we can do is basically plug in the cables for the front panel. We have a USB 3.0 connection, so that goes into your USB 3.0 header. Okay, so you just have a look on your motherboard and you'll see a F USB 3.0. Plug that in quickly there. You have a tab on the top of the plug. Make sure you follow where that tab goes. In order to make this a bit tidier, I've used these slots here the case has and I just routed the cable through there and wherever it plugs in, I'm just going to drop that here and then plug it in. As for the other two cables, they plug at the bottom. I'm just going to route that through here and whichever side it plugs into, you just have to go in through that slot. Okay, so now that we have that routed, we will plug in our USB 3.0. Now when you're plugging it in, don't just plug it in with so much force that you crack or break the motherboard. And then we have our HD audio, which then plugs into the one that says audio or HD audio. This particular motherboard tells you everything that you need to know when it comes to how everything plugs in. I'll give you guys a close up in just a second. And this is what I mean by plugging it into the header that says USB 3.0. So as you can see there, there is a header that says USB 3.0. At the bottom here, we have one that says audio and then another one that says com and then L LPT, TPM, so forth and so forth. We need to plug in our, our power button, our reset switch. If you take a look down at the bottom here, it's all labeled there for you. So that's really helpful. Not all PC cases show this, but I'm sure all the newer ones, the more expensive ones, would show you all this stuff. We have five fans. We can install two down the bottom and we can also install three up the top. Now this is also a panel here that's designed for liquid cooling, but I'm not going to use liquid cooling at the moment. We need to remove the bottom panel so that we can install our fans. We're going to have to remove this here. So you gotta unscrew the panels on both sides here. We unscrew these. And the whole bottom will come off and we can install our two fans. There we go. I'm gonna lift that up, I'm gonna move that aside, and then we're going to install two fans down the bottom. So we want this to blow air up, and we will just simply install them like so. Okay. Now we can install our base plate again. So we'll just put that back on. Nice and tight, nice and snug. With these two bottom fans in, we can install our top fan. I'll just remove two bolts here. I can take this door off. Now we can install the top three fans. We will install it like this. I just put in the screw loosely first so I can uh, position the fans where I want them. Easy. I'm going to position them exactly where I want them. I'm going to tighten them all down now. So three fans installed and install back our top piece. And we'll put our graphics card back in. The graphics card always sits in the top slot. It's in. Now, to hold that down, we're going to use screws. We'll uh, screw it in. Two's in. Next, we also have our network card. Push the antennas all the way through. There we go. Okay, perfect. Our graphics cards in, network cards in. Now we, we can install 
our hard drives. For the hard drives, it's different on this one. They sit on here. This can either fit a 3.5 inch hard drive or a 2.5 SSD. Depending on what you want to install will also dictate how you're going to mount it. So I'll take them both off now and we're going to mount both of them on now. All I have to do is take off the top one and then I can install one of them without having to pull it off. But the bottom one, I'm going to install the SSD there and then for the top one, I'm going to install the 3.5 inch hard drive. I want the cables to come out here so that it plugs easily into the uh, motherboard. This is how it installs. The four holes here would be for your solid state drive because it lines straight up with it. And as for your hard drive, it's the four holes here that you're going to use these four holes will line up with these four holes and that's it and all you have to take note of is where you want your cables to come out of so you can plug it in they give you specific screws for the hard drives and also the solid state drive i'm going to use the screws that you say hdd on them line up the screw holes now they do have a uh, rubber grommets that way it helps with vibration and also just when you mount it it keeps it off the ground because you do have a circuit board underneath your hard drive just tightening it make sure that you have a nice gap so that you know nothing's touching the circuit board you can see there's a little gap there still we can now install our solid state drive right here and this is how we mount our solid state drive that's on now and now we can simply put this one back on as well remember we want the plugs to be on this side so that our cables can plug into it we'll line that up there are two slots here where these two slots here will sit in that's what helps line it up now that we have all of that installed we're going to run all the cables to where we want them we have three fan cables here that need to plug together all five fans plugged in together ready to go now, lastly we're going to install our power source so our power source sits on this plate here so we need to unscrew this take it off and then mount our power source so there's two more screws here for the power source bracket and now i have the power source bracket off it has these two tabs here that sit in the pc case that helps line it up so if this sits in like so we want the power source to line up like this so it's going to install like so so it installs like this now we can screw in our screws that hold the power source in make sure the holes all line up we'll just install all of these in and we'll just install it like that power supply in place there we go so that's our power supply installed now what we have to do now is put this back in we have to line up these tabs first and then we can screw in our screws to hold it in we'll put these two screws in first two and then we'll put these two in that's our power source installed so now it's just a matter of running all our cables again first things first let's figure out where they're all going first things we're going to run are the main ones we have our 24 pin ATX then we have our graphics card and also our CPU cable we'll grab all those put them all together now and we'll push them where they need to go the ATX is just in the middle here we'll just dangle this down here like so and then we'll push it on through here so we can plug it in then we have our 8 pin over here so we'll just push that through the top here and that's where that's going to go and then we have our graphics card now the graphics card plug is basically about the middle here we're going to pretty much do the same thing as the atx power cord all we have left are the molex cables and our sata cables that's it and because we're only using two hard drives next to each other we're going to use this one here because it has two SATA connections already and that's going to plug right into each other and then there is a Molex that will plug directly into the power for our fans. We'll plug in our SATA connections into our hard drives first. Okay, so we'll go from the top and we'll plug this one in. Okay. And then there's one at the bottom of it, so that will plug in next. There we go. 
our Molex, we can push through here so we can plug in all our fans. And then all these extra cables here, we're just gonna find a way to tidy it all up. We'll turn our PC around and we'll plug in all the other connections now. Okay, so we have here our graphics card plug, which is a six pin in this case. So we'll plug that in. That's plugged in now. We have our 24 pin ATX. So we'll plug that in as well. Give it some support as we plug it in because we do not want to flex the motherboard too much. So we kind of support it as we plug it in. Just make sure the tab clips over it and that's it. Okay, there we go. Now we can plug in our eight pin. Just plug that in here. Give it some support as you're plugging it in. All right, so now that's everything plugged in. Okay, and now it's just a matter of tidying up all your cables and we are pretty much done. So we wanna tidy up all these cables. We're not using any of these SATA cables at the moment because I'm not connecting any more hard drives. So we'll just fold them all up and just keep it nice and tidy and we will just tuck it right here. When you buy your PC, they always give you these little tie-offs. These really come in handy when you build your PC because you can use it to tie off any cables that you don't want. It's kind of like tire wire. And I'm just gonna wrap it around the cables I don't want and just tidy up these cables a little bit. In order to get a cleaner setup, I think I'm going to have to plug these two fans in at the bottom. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Here we go, beautiful. That's everything put together now. Now, we can uh, plug it all in and uh, see how we go. I'm going to remove the slots off my old PC and put it into this one. So that's all our PCI slots in. As you can see, it does look a whole lot better with all the PCI slots in. Just gives it that kind of like mesh look, as you can see there. We just have to plug in our SATA cables now. Hard drives are plugged in. Now we just have to plug it into the motherboard. One, two, beautiful, that's it. All right, now it's just a matter of tidying up all the cables and um, we can turn it on and just see how it all goes. And here is the finished product. As you can see, we've got the two fans at the bottom and then up top we have the three fans. We have the CPU cooler, we've got our RAM there, there's our graphics card. We have our power source right there. And we have our SSD in there and our hard drive right there. So on the other side, just down here, there will be room for another hard drive, but only a SSD, only a solid state drive. So in future, if I want to put one there, I will. And then that way I can put another 3.5 inch hard drive here and just have the one solid state drive here that will run all the operating system and drivers. But basically that's the gist of it, guys. That's what a Johnsbo Mod 4 can look like. It is a pretty nice case, honestly, when you think about it. Complete open frame. I'm very pleased with this case, the way it is. In future, I may just install a 240mm water cooler. That way I can remove this CPU cooler and just install a water cooler there. That's how we decided to route all the cables in the end. It is a pretty tidy setup. It looks pretty good. I just bundled them up and then I've just zip tied them together. That's the power right there. That's how the power sits, just like that, standing up. Okay, and that brings us to the end of the video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Ring that notification bell in order to keep up with the uploads. I'm going to leave you now with what the Johnsbo Mod 4 case looks like, completely built. And I really hope you guys enjoy it. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off.